Crikey, g'day guys, how's it going? I'm out here today in Hampton Park in Auckland. Unfortunately, none of the signs have the name of the original par site that we're standing on, but we've got some beautiful old stone walls here. New Zealand polygonal technology, basically, how they've matched these all together and joined them in. Perhaps they used to be more filled in, I'm not sure, but vast amounts of these stone walls all round and then lots of other stone structures about the place. It was absolutely amazing. So this was a huge par site in New Zealand, pre-Europeans, and uh, just amazing what they've done with all this volcanic rock around everywhere. As you come up, so we're actually on top of an old volcano as well. And this is the top of the volcano here, and then inside is the crater that we'll go up and see. So obviously the Modi had it as a fortified pa, and they were living in here, thriving, had gardens all round, cultivating all of what they like to eat. Beautiful, got a really nice feel about the place, a lot of age. I would love to see the council take a bit more care of it and really return it back to its former glory. It would be a great interactive place for people to come and enjoy. So you're coming up here, you can imagine big fences around here when it was a path. And then down in here they've moved all the rocks away and they'd have had their little village in here, or quite a good sized village. And further down the hill had more. As you can see, it's quite an expensive amount of land that it once was, and they did quarry this area in the 1960s. So what have we lost? What treasures have they bowled to make into roads and whatnot else? But yeah, there's some really good bits um, here. We'll go around and film a few other bits and have that all up on YouTube for you to watch. So absolutely fascinating if you know any other great spots in Auckland that you think Mr. Coromandel time you should check that out find out about I'd love to leave it in the comments below peace out Coromandel time if you have a look at the sheer size of this place absolutely massive when it was being lived in full time you can imagine rock circles around beautiful fires, places to cook, clean, produce food, live and just would have been such a wonderful place here out of the weather just to thrive and just all the daily goings on of a place like this, it's, um, it's absolutely fascinating like this little rock pit here screams out to me you know what's gone on, what's been seen, what have we lost what don't we know anymore? What's been buried by time, by other volcanoes, and by European settlers? It's absolutely fascinating to be here and get an idea of these places in New Zealand and uh, just soak it all in. Yeah, the extensive polygonal walls. It's very interesting. Here I am and I'm not 100% sure what may be a hungy pit. These also could have been pits where they were growing food in. Or they had their men in here watching out for other tribes maybe coming. So there's several uses but all around this area there's these lulls in the ground which would have been ideal for many different things. So it's really interesting, you can see the obvious paths all around them. It's quite sad down here what you see, the beautiful old polygonal wall, and then, oh, we're putting in a new building, oh, whoopsie, we've ripped out the polygonal wall. It's really sad to see that the Auckland Council's just let that happen, and they're not protecting a historic Modi path like this and um you know i really hope that something's going to be done about that but yeah really fascinating these boot lulls in the ground that they've dug in to 
were either growing or maybe they had roofs over and these were all houses. It's really interesting and I'd, I'd love to see a bit of archaeology going on here, finding out a bit more about it. Oh well. What you can see here is a beautiful artist uh, um, drawing of what the area was like and as you can see this was a big mountain and there would have been thousands and thousands of people living here with a smaller one off to the side they've cleared their forest they were growing kuma they were growing a lot of crops growing flax making ropes they were a very industrial people and the whitewashing of the europeans has led us to believe that they were barely surviving when they were here but they were absolutely thriving and this sort of place shows it over in Mangere there's also stone walls and they claim that they were only built in the 1940s maybe later 18. 1840s I mean maybe around then and that they picked it up off European practices but I believe the Maori had been doing this sort of stuff for a lot longer and we just don't want to give them credit for that they deserve because it's easier then to you know excuse the land we stole and what happened but yeah just absolutely fascinating seeing the, the sheer size of it all and as we looked at those holes earlier on it does make me think were they for where people had their houses they were sunken in they would have had a fireplace in there coming out and then they all had their little homes in those and they've just quarried it out to um, live down in there with a shelter up above. Absolutely fascinating. Have a look at this, this is a well grown over bit of wall here. I'd always been led to believe in the past, oh this is just natural formation but look at it, big rock, another big rock. This rock placed nicely on top of it, forming up into this hill. A midden pit from food that they were bringing up, Kaimawana, bringing out from the beaches. Absolutely fascinating. And then into this little valley. Um, yeah, just absolutely amazing. As with a lot of sites throughout the Pacific and the rest of the world, what you often see happening is the older, more large polygonal technology is down below and often buried. And then on top of it, you've had more generations do the years. And like the pyramids, the older the pyramids, usually the better quality. And as they've got a newer, the work isn't as good. So this is a really good example of here, where it's got these massive base rocks, and then they've put consecutive layers on top. Just absolutely fascinating. Solid, solid as a rock, you know? These are really well-made structures. And the Māori were farming animals and things at the time they made these. So there was a lot of work that's gone into them. You know, this, this rock here perfectly placed to join into this rock here. It's just absolutely fascinating. I suggest everybody get out there and have a look at this stuff for yourselves. A bit of, uh, you know, amateur archaeology can go a long way. We can discover a lot and really shed some light on the importance of New Zealand polygonal technology. Peace out.